for customers, they don't actually care what technology we are using. AI or any other technology is just a medium to provide the value to the customers. So one day, one of my customers told me that, hey, Joseph, I don't care if you use AI or not. What I want is get my job done using your solution. We ended up selling our company for $200 million. And it took us almost, I would say, three years to generate the revenue. Hi, I'm Joseph, co-founder and CEO at Thinkly. Thinkly is an AI platform that helps to understand the customer feedback at scale. So everyone in the company can get benefited from customer feedback to build a better product or do better marketing campaign. We are a recent YZ company. We started a company called Soale back in 2015. It was uh, four years and uh, we ended up selling our company back in 2019 for $200 million and started my another company uh, last year. We've been in AI world in the last decade. I've watched uh, how AI evolved over the course of time. This is really exciting time for all of the uh, AI startups. So I'm excited to be part of this journey. Back in 2015, when AlphaGo came out, built by a great company, DeepMind, and um, AlphaGo actually was shocking the entire world that AI can actually outbid the human beings in the space that nobody think of. Nobody, like not many people understood in what area AI will make an impact. To be honest, I had no idea back then. That's why I thought I should jump into AI and do the business on my hands to actually make the change. Manufacturing has been operated in the same way for the last 50 years. What we saw is that AI is really good at understanding the pattern. The one of the patterns that the manufacturers wanted was when it comes to like analyzing or understanding defective products is all done by human but we thought that that's what AI can do really really well. We ended up selling our company for 200 million dollars. The growth was crazy. Every year we grew five times but it took some time to actually find the first 10 customers and it took us almost I would say three years to generate the revenue. In the first three years we tested different verticals to which vertical that we can make the most impact. The first vertical we go after was the fashion industry but we have no connection there. Yeah I'm not from fashion industry at all. So what we do is just pick up the phone and dial the number to try to talk to uh, who can actually make a decision in the company. In total, we called around 500 prospects in fashion industries and it's actually almost every company in Korea back then. After that, we just went to the factory and bring our laptop and uh, one pager on my right hand and left hand. So CEO, me, CTO. At the time, we didn't have a product. We just have like a technology and an algorithm. We just try to show them the end goal. Try to start from there. If things work there, here are the business impact that you will get. Give us three months to prove the value from the scratch. If not, then you don't need to pay. But if you think there's a value, pay whatever you think is valuable. Three out of four actually ended up paying. For customers, they don't actually care what technology we are using. So one day, one of my customers told me that, hey, Joseph, I don't care if you use AI or not. What I want is get my job done using your solution. That was actually really a big turning point for me, how we should look at AI or any emerging technology. Generative AI is definitely getting a lot of highlights nowadays. If we look at the history, the trend is always changing, evolving. AI or any other technology is just a medium to provide the value uh, to the customer. So I would say that focusing on the value that you try to deliver by leveraging technology makes sense, but just framing or just building something using AI that provides like zero value to the customer, it doesn't really make sense. And even if you raise up money by leveraging the trend, it doesn't last long that much. It just lasts like maybe two years, your runway, and you'll be in like big danger once you cannot figure out the value prop that you try to bring to the world. The reason we started a new company is that we want to actually go into the new different market, a new different domain. My last company, customer base was mostly focused on the Asian market. And now we try to make a more global product, right? It's a, like a whole new market, whole new customer base. And when you talk to customers in the beginning, they don't actually tell what their real problem is. They have like no incentive to do that. You got to know them really deeply, try to understand their workflow or their day-to-day -day life deep as possible. But to do that, they need to trust 
you to tell what the root cause is, what the real pain is. Right now, we try to open up a lot of like meetups or like training sessions for our prospects to actually provide the value first and help them to actually engage with the people in the same community. And we try to actually provide our solution after that. So building your social proof as much as possible, maybe leveraging your thesis, leveraging your school or leveraging your personal network. You got to do whatever it takes to actually get to the point where people heard of you at least. The way we try to find hair on fire problem is we double down their workflow and what their pains are. We start with what's your goal? What does the success look like this year? There are like some bullet points that we can actually come up with, right? We take the bullet points and meet the new people Try to say the bullet points if there's something that resonates with them as well. Then you can narrow down a bullet points. Let's say in the beginning you have like a five different bullet points that could be a potential hair on fire problem. Once you talk to 10 customers, it could narrow down to three. Once you talk to 50, 100 customers, you will hear the one common bullet points that is hair on fire. That's how we try to narrow down the scope in the beginning. If you look at the market, there are like so many great products that's been in the market for 10 years, 20 years, right? So you cannot outbid them from product perspective, I would say, when you started your company four weeks ago. But what you can do is that not like bigger companies, you can actually use your entire capability and use your entire co-founders to actually solve that issue, no matter they use your product or not. At least you can actually do something for them, right? Even if you don't actually have the product to deliver. I think you as a founder who has a strong vision, you should sell yourself, not the product, to actually actually solve the customer's pain points in the beginning. And once customers see the value, then you can start building your product. Especially nowadays, because people are using so many different SaaS tools, they are super busy to do their like day-to-day -day job. Nobody want to tech stack on top of existing tech stack. So what we try to do is, so we hear the problem and we know uh, what solution could work out, but the way we deliver the output is not providing our like a new four weeks buggy product, but we try to use the tool that they are using already. It could be like, Google Looker or it could be exist customer support platform and if they see the value off of it that's when we started building our like own product own dashboard to actually provide them more granular level of details the reason I ended up starting a new company with my previous CTO was that we were such a great fit to actually create something new. We've been working together for the last decade. We know like how we work, who we are. Finding co-founder is almost like a marriage, right? You should have a great fit to each other in many different aspects. For instance, do you care the technology first or customer first? There's a deep tech company who actually focused on building a great technology. It's not something wrong. But if you have different mindset in terms of your value or which one you should prioritize, it's really hard to go along with together for the longer period of time. And the second one is that always better that co-founders have a complementary skill set. If you are good at A and your co-founder is good at B, it's much easier to actually work together in the long run because you guys need each other to build the best company. So CTO and I talked about what we can do with AI more. One of the pains we also experienced then and we also noticed that other companies are experiencing is basically understanding what customers want. For like consumer apps and for e-commerce, this problem has been existed for many years. But the reason there was no better way was that the technology was not mature because a large language model getting much better. Now, this is a great timing to actually provide this type of value. We know that AI can change the world much more than before. We've been in the AI world for the last 10 years and we've observed the change in the last 10 years as well, right? So creating a new value using AI is something that I really enjoy doing. The process of running this company, the journey that I'm, I'm going right now is, is really make me excited.